Hey everybody, Last Outrider here. Today in What is Rogue Trader, it is time for Who Were the Original Eldar? Hmm, let's find out. The Eldar race and the craft worlds. Of all the galaxy's ancient races, the Eldar most closely resemble mankind. Averaging just over two meters, they are a little taller than humans, more slightly built and more delicately featured. In human terms, most Eldar are radi radiantly beautiful. Skin color is pale, in some cases almost white. Their ears are delicately pointed, but Otherwise, there is little physical difference between Eldar and humans. Indeed, the two races are genetically so close that it is even possible for them to interbreed. Yep, you heard it right there. In 40k first edition, there are half Eldar. Yeah, it's true. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, where was I at? Oh yes, the, they are so genetically close, it is even possible for them to interbreed. Viable offspring are rare, but not unheard of. Of course, the concept of humans and Eldar interbreeding should probably also be rare. Even more rare, but apparently not unheard of. <laughs> Combining the physical appearance and mental attributes of both races. Several theories have been advanced to explain the physical traits shared with humans. The most commonly held one is that the two share a common ancestor. The truth will probably never be known. <laughs> the Eldar are almost unique in that they inhabit no worlds. Instead, they live in great craft worlds. Huge spacecraft, tens of miles across, and usually circular in shape. Each craft is an independent Eldar nation with its own culture, leaders, history, traditions, and attitudes to other races. Each is home to several thousand Eldar, often as many as 10,000 individuals. Craft worlds travel only very slowly, drifting with the currents of space or running before the solar winds. Their great sails billowing before them. Inside the craft world, thousands of miles of tunnels and passages connect palaces, huge artificial gardens, wilderness caverns miles across, and sealed factory areas where material goods are produced and air and waste recycled. Sometimes a craft will orbit a star for years or journey to a planet for some specific reason. Mostly, however, craft worlds drift aimlessly throughout the voids of space, self-sufficient and altogether heedless of other races and worlds. Although craft worlds do have their own spacecraft, these are incapable of faster than light travel and are used only for investigating local planetary bodies or inspecting the fabric of the craft's solar sails. Yet the Eldar do travel throughout the galaxy and are frequently encountered as traders and merchants on human worlds. Yes, you heard that correctly. <laughs> they are able to move from world to world by means of an amazing system of warp gates. Gates are hyperspatial tunnels leading directly from one part of the galaxy to another. All Eldar craft worlds are known to have warp gates situated inside, leading to worlds 
throughout the Imperium and beyond. Some gates connect to other craft worlds or to void areas of space. A typical craft world has thousands of these gates. Thousands of these gates. I'll say it a third time because it's, yeah. A typical craft world had thousands of warp gates within it. That's why they can travel pretty much anywhere and didn't really give a crap where the craft world is flying. <clears throat> wow. Although not all may be functional at any given time, normally it is only the Eldar who are able to use these gates, most of which must be opened by a special key or series of keys carried by the Eldar travelers. The extent of the warp gate system is a matter of conjecture, but it must be very vast and, able, and enable the Eldar to move so freely from one place to another. Now this is interesting, because if you go back a couple parts, you will see I did a video about warp gates. I did this on purpose because now you're going to see that warp gates and web gates are in actuality two completely different phenomena. I don't know what happened to warp gates in 40k, apparently they just disappeared and web gates became the only thing, but I don't know. Okay. Um, Make up your own rules, man. It's your universe. That's all I can say. No, there, there is no 40K canon. Okay? None. Now, next time, I'm going to go on to well, more about the society of Eldar. Which I can tell you is different than what it is now. And I will see you then. Bye.